today's show by talking about technology because right now there are two big headlines swirling around just that one headline for gamers and the other that could disrupt travel for some time so let's start there with the debate on what's happening over 5g in the airports but in order to do that i actually want to head over into our virtual world let's go access granted you are now entering the nbclx virtual world delayed deployment of 5G services at towers near some U.S. airports. The companies were scheduled to begin the 5G rollout on Wednesday. Now, this comes after warnings from multiple airlines. If 5G went live near airports in cities like Dallas, New York, Chicago, and Seattle, the FAA would prohibit pilots from using altimeters during landing at more than 80 airports near 5G sites. Why is that an issue? Is it an issue, you might be asking yourself? Well, the new 5G services use something called C-band frequencies, and they are close to the portion of airwaves used by radio altimeters, and those devices determine the distance between the plane and the ground. You only want the plane on the ground if it's supposed to be on the ground, a measurement needed by pilots when the visibility is limited. If those airports were to experience bad weather, the airline industry warns that there would be travel delays. The FAA is uncomfortable with the safety risk, and as a consequence, the impact on our operations to mitigate that would be a significant setback. And we have two international airlines. You have Air India and Emirates said that they would cancel or suspend flights to the United States on Wednesday because of the start of 5G service. Now, earlier this week, United Airlines estimated that the disruption would affect 1.25 million United passengers and at least 15,000 flights annually. The airline industry did offer a solution that would allow 5G to be put in place nationwide starting on Wednesday, except for within two miles of affected airport runways. This is reckless, it's dangerous, and it's got to stop. Take a pause. This is about a cell phone signal, and we're focused on protecting lives. The wireless carriers are impatient to deploy technology that uh, stands to make a big impact, a positive impact on our economy. Uh, but on the aviation side, we've also got to make sure that it's safe. So, like we said earlier, AT&T and Verizon did agree to delay 5G deployment around some airports. But on Wednesday, a majority of the 5G networks will still go live. The companies insist that the networks already operate safely without interference in nearly 40 countries and would do the same in the United States. Here to further discuss the big concerns surrounding the 5G rollout is Hugh Odom, founder and president of Vertical Consultants. In addition, you is a former attorney for AT&T. You, I want to start here. Why are we seeing so much drama with the 5G rollout now? Well, this has been constantly delayed over the last few months, but uh, you understand that they've been delaying this for over two years. Uh, the aviation, aviation industry has known about the 5G rollout for over two years, and we had a delay in December back to January, and then in the middle of January here to today. And I think it's just because the aviation industry has kind of dropped the ball. They've known of the, known of the 5G rollout. They've known of the possible, and I want to emphasize possible issue that 5G has with the altimeters of the plane. And they really haven't come to the wireless industry and said, here is the problem. So we can use that and try to find out what the solution is. And that's what the, the frustration from the wireless industry is right now. That makes sense. Now, I'm curious, you kind of mentioned one thing there. Is that the evidence that they have that 5G service could affect aircraft equipment or can it also affect other equipment? Well, particularly to aviation industry, it's showing that there could be, and again, emphasize could be some interference. What the what the issue for the aviation industry is, they have such an old fleet of planes, and they and the there's such differences in the calibrations of this altimeter and from different manufacturer, different age of planes. So that comes into the equation. Earlier this week, the FAA cleared 45 percent of the air fleets out there, leaving 55 percent uncleared. Part of that is, again, not having a way to calibrate against 5G. Now, will the 5G rollout have any impact on travelers who are trying to fly out this week? Well, it could, could because okay. there's been some temporary solution provided by AT&T and Verizon. They just recently, earlier this afternoon, said they're going to shut off service of 5G up to two miles around the, the radius of, of these airports. Um, but that provides a temporary solution. We've already seen some of the international flights uh, saying that they're not going to fly into the U.S. right now. They're going to they're temporarily halt that. 
So unless this gets resolved, I don't know how there's not going to be some disruption with the aviation industry because, again, if they're saying there's an issue, again, a possible issue, then it has to come to some, some understanding between the parties or you, unless you don't turn on 5G forever around these airports, you're still going to have the issue. Interesting. Okay, so some major airline carriers are calling for an immediate intervention, which it sounds like we have a, a pause and a stop to this at the moment, but we need a long term solution. So do we kind of know what that long term solution would look like and kind of who has the power to make that happen? Well, right now, the power comes down to the federal government and the oh. Biden administration has stepped in today and said, look, let's let's kind of figure this out. And they've even said, let's try to get this resolved in the next 24 hours. I don't see how that gets how that gets done. But I think the what has to happen is you have to have the Biden administration come in and say, look, both parties need to get together and they need to go to either corner and 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 try to resolve this and say, look, here's the problem from the aviation industry. Here's how we get this solved and and address that to the wireless industry and say, look, here's one, two, three, four ways of providing two things. One providing safety around these airports, because mm -hmm. there's everybody wants uh, safe uh, flights around around the country. But two, also allowing the uh, wireless industry to roll out 5G, because 5G is not just for the purposes of, of pr getting you faster videos and, and being able to text and faster, et cetera. It is it costs the economy, the U.S. economy, $140 million per day that 5G is not rolled out. And this is and this is going to be a continued situation if we don't resolve and put in a, a method to handle any possible interference issues with the aviation industry or other industries, because, again, it has a wide range of effect, not only with regards to flying, but the general economy in the United States. Wait, why does it cost so much for every day that it's not rolled out? Because the I'm sorry, the wireless industry the rollout of 5G is estimated to have a four, uh, sorry, a $2.5 trillion impact on the economy, basically by putting in more jobs, putting ah. in infrastructure and the wireless infrastructure to facilitate the supply chain and other industry. So 5G is really the next wave of what's called the fourth industrial revolution. We're changing from a, a way by which we mine data. And that data provides us a lot of different ways to, to monetize that. And unless we have 5G, we're not, we don't have it available to be able to take advantage of that. Hugh, just really quickly, a, a spokesperson for AT&T released a statement saying in part, quote, now we are frustrated by the FAA's inability to do what nearly 40 countries have done, which is to safely deploy 5G technology without disrupting aviation services, and we urge it to do so in a timely manner. I'm just curious, really quickly, how are other countries handling the issue? Well, as, as mentioned in that press release, there's 40 other countries that's been studied and there's not been an issue with 5G and the airports. The, the only difference is that there's a little bit different bandwidth, and it's called C-band. There's a little bit different bandwidth they're using with inside that C-band uh, that's being used by those different countries, more particularly France and some other European countries. The other issue is that they have a little larger amount of, of, of I guess, buffering around the airports. What AT&T and Verizon had come to the table with and said, look, we'll, we'll kind of scale it down within one mile of the, of the airports. And the aviation industry says we need two miles because that's more, more like what the uh, other 40 other countries do. So there's, there's some back and forth here. I think the frustration from AT&T, Verizon as well is that again, as I emphasized before, they've had two years to work this out. Nothing yeah. has changed. The problem hasn't changed. Two plus two equals four. And that, now they're coming down to the last minute and they're saying, what, this is going to be catastrophic if we don't deal with it right now. Well, Hugh, I want you to know that I came into this interview with a lot of questions and I'm leaving with a lot of answers. I'm sure our viewers are as well. So thank you so much for coming on and explaining. Thank you. And now we're switching to gaming. See what I did there? We're switching to gaming. Anyway.